Hello everyone, and welcome to the Narcosis channel, and let's continue the third ECG subject, ECG grid and normal values, and we will continue the fourth way to enjoy our life as Albert Camus said in his book. The six ways to enjoy your life. Nothing in life is worth turning your back on if you love it. In the last lectures, we have talked about the ECG grid and the normal P and Q waves. In this lecture, we will continue the normal values of the QRS complex. The R wave is the major positive deflection of the QRS complex. As we know from the previous lecture, that Q wave is the negative deflection that precede the R wave, and it represents the septal depolarization on direction from left to right and upward opposite to the major depolarization of the left ventricle toward the apex of the heart, which represent the R wave. The R wave is upright in most ECG leads, as we can see here in this ECG paper. Except in lead AVR in this lead, the P wave and T wave are also inverted, and left ventricle depolarization appears as S wave. In the limb leads, R wave voltage is normally at least 5 mm in length, or one large square, or five small square, when ECG grid 1 millivolt equal to 10 mm in length. While in the precordial leads, R wave voltage exceeds 10 mm in length, or two large square, or 10 small square, when ECG grid 1 millivolt equal to 10 mm in length. That's because chest leads are closer to the heart and will pick large waves values. And we can see how R wave appear in each chest lead as follows. We know that the location of chest leads are lead V, one over the fourth intercostal space, just to the right of sternal border. Lead V, two, over the fourth intercostal space, just to the left of sternal border. Lead V4 over the fifth intercostal space in the midclavicular line. Lead V3 over a point midway between V2 and V4. Lead V5 over the anterior axillary line at the same level as lead V4. Lead V6 over the mid axillary line at the same level as leads V4 and V5. The depolarization of the heart will start with atrial depolarization, and that will be drawn as biphasic P wave in lead V1 as we know from previous videos, and positive wave in all other chest leads. Then, we will have the AV nodal delay that represented by PR segment. After that, we will have the septal depolarization which occur from left to right and upward toward the V1 and V2 leads and this will draw a positive small R wave in this two leads, and away from lead V6, and this will draw a small Q wave in V6 lead. After that, we will proceed with the major depolarization of the left ventricle toward the apex of the heart, away from V1 and V2, and this will draw a large negative S wave on this leads, and toward leads V4 and V5 and V6, and this will draw a large positive R wave on this leads. On lead V3, the depolarization of left ventricle goes parallel to the lead, so it will start draw a positive wave. Then, as the depolarization goes away, it will record a negative wave on lead V3. Then, we will have the S wave that represent the rest depolarization of left and right ventricle and we will talk about it on the next videos. So if we take the ECG of each chest leads and put them together, we will notice the following. Can you see it? Yes, I see that as we go to lead V6, the R wave become taller. Exactly. Under normal circumstances, the R wave voltage gradually increases as we move from lead V1 to lead V6. This is known as normal R wave progression in precordial leads. And now let's finish this lecture by the following awesome explanation 
to the R wave in lead V1 and lead V6. Specifically, if draw only V1 and V6 leads on the heart, we can see that V1 looks to the heart from the right and V6 looks to the here from the left side. The depolarization of the heart will start with atrial depolarization and that will be drawn as biphasic P he wave in V1 and only a positive wave in V6. Then we will have the AV nodal delay that represented by PR segment. After that, we will have the septal depolarization which occur from left to right and upward toward the V1, and this will draw a positive small R wave in this lead and away from lead V6, and this will draw a small Q wave in V6 lead. After that, we will proceed with the major depolarization of the left ventricle toward the apex of the heart, away from V1, and this will draw a large negative S wave on this lead and toward leads V6, and this will draw a large positive R wave on this lead. Then, we will have the S wave that represent the rest depolarization of left and right ventricle, and we will talk about it on the next videos. Normally, the R wave amplitude does not exceed 0.4 millivolt, or 4 millimeter, or 4 small squares in length. In lead V, one when ECG grid set up 1 millivolt equal to 10 millimeter, where here R wave reflects septal activation. And normally, the R wave amplitude does not exceed 2.5 MV, or 25 millimeter, or 25 small squares in length. In lead V6, when ECG grid set up 1 millivolt equal to 10 millimeter, where here R wave reflects left ventricular activation. The R wave is smaller than the S wave in lead V1, and the R wave is taller than the S wave in lead V6. So, we have finished the ECG grid and the normal P and Q and R waves values, and we will continue our talking about the normal ECG values in the next videos. And now let's jump to the question of this day. What does poor R wave progression mean? Thanks for watching. I will be more than grateful if you press the like, subscribe button, and share this video with your colleagues. If you have any suggestions to improve my channel, leave a comment and let me know, please. See the description below for the newest updates and for more infos. Also, don't forget to follow us on other social media sites. Keep your narcotic dose and good luck.